All right, Grace, I'm going to say it's a broadcast. Okay, we do um, messages and go into the Q&A. Here we go. <laughs> Greetings, this is Archangel Gabriel. This is Splitting of the Tides, Soul Transformation, a new grouping of realities. You are seeing who is um, honest and true colors are coming out throughout the rest of this year. Your political angle, more of the, actually more of the spiritual nature will start to become more clear. If it hasn't already for some of you. Uh, this is the era of uh, the shapeshifters. Uh, so through your third eye, through your angelic field, please some of you will begin to see shape sh those shapeshifting uh, in front of you uh, slowly. Mm -hmm. so it's just a, a process for those that you're becoming more in tune. So if you think you just saw something, most likely you have. And this shows that if there are chakras also are realigning. They are aligned, but realigning to your energy field. So you are seeing what is here, what is truly here. So. Greetings, this is Marduk of the Anunnaki. This is soul transformations. There, there are also time portals that are locked on your planet. Why things are slow as they are. <laughs> uh, some of them are buildings, some of them are mountains, infrastructures uh, that keep things slow. <laughs> So as you are transforming into your, you'll be able to handle yourselves as it is done individually. As a collective, you can. Uh, it is interesting, those that are very much into, you know, being mind controlled now. It's like a mindset, a, a mind control mindset. But those, they can also activate themselves too, collectively. Mm -hmm. They just feel better as a collective. So you can see there, and this comes from other play, alien groups, some Pleiadian, some Syrian. Uh, they kind of go from world to world as a collective. So if they're under a media's control grid. Uh, they've been that. It's just they're used to being part of a collective. That's all. <laughs> Family's used to it. So they're not ready to go on their own just yet. As you know, it's very difficult to be on your own. 
uh, but you're getting to know more of your old energies, which is uh, bravery on many ends. Yes, your oceans play a part in your timeline creation also. As a healing factor, but eventually, yes, your oceans will begin to speak more, even have sounds from your oceans. Some places do, some mountains have sounds, but also the oceans can have sounds. And they do, but there's more like a singing energy. And some have heard it when you're out in the ocean in the middle of nowhere, uh, but more of that will become more part of your uh, society. Gradual. Greetings, we are the Elohim. Blessings to you. Yes, there is a, a energy of awakening here. Yes. As has been of an unawakening. As basically you're getting used to yourselves and understanding more of the higher dimensions and allowing that to stay with you. Some of your, everyone has their different role here. Some of you are here to unlock the realities, but yes, there is a not an easy incarnation, is it? Others are there to enjoy it and continue the high vibrations of your reality. So everyone has their own different step of uh, of your place here. Uh, some that are exercising and looking beautiful all day are helping the new vibrations, but they are not ready for the heavy incarnation cycles. <laughs> As they're your world. So those are be beautiful, but that's about all they can do. <laughs> Sometimes you need that. Oh, it's like a tree. It's like a person, like a tree or a uh, flower. <clears throat> so. <laughs> so I'm here to help you uh, answer your questions whenever you are ready. Well, greetings, Elohim. Greetings. Thank you for coming in. Blessings to you. Thank you. Our first this evening, we have Logan. Greetings, Elohim. Greetings to you. I would like to know if there are any messages from the grace that connect to me in my dreams. Uh, some of them are your children. Some of your some of them are your parents. Um, they have, in some ways, it seems they've kind of brought you to this world, uh, and to learn through you. So they have done it also. You take turns. Some of them have been teachers. Some of them have been pets on this world. So if you feel an energy of them, like shape shift, like to a dog or a cat, uh, it gives you kind of an idea where, where they have been on this world. So that's Cool. And my second question is, are there any messages from my guides? You do have a connection to Willis, uh, the deity. It's, it's uh, deep in your past, something that, as you get older, will get to more of an understanding. Uh, she, she actually created a lot of your timelines for this earth. Uh, it's for you to connect to certain uh, feminine energies in this, um, in this incarnation uh, to help guide them, but also guide yourself. Blessings. Interesting. Thank you. Blessings to you. Okay, hey, thank you. Up next, we have Silver Claw. Not there. No, I guess he left the room. Out. And we'll move on then. Uh, I see him still here, but perhaps he's. Well, anyway, uh, up next is Emmy. Hello, Elohim. Hello, greetings. Hey, greetings. Um, I'm just wondering if uh, your collective has any um, 
more messages for me for my um, health and well-being. Well, you are help. Well, you are doing your passions, always on a on a spiritual side. Uh, you are there. You say you're connecting to the universe as you continue your passions. There were, you're doing your mission as you feel as fit. Uh, as you're also releasing a lot of past life uh, karma of uh, not always doing enough. So yes, you do have like an activist energy around you uh, to to also help you in your in your own path to uh, raise the awareness of what is going on in this world. Too many are uh, in the past lives. You kept your kept things quiet. You didn't say anything, and you knew much. In this lifetime, you are choosing to do something different. Lessons. Thank you. Just wondering, uh, I ask this question a lot, but if you have any messages for my job related situation. Job situation? It's hard to hear. Um, yes, there. Yes. Uh, it's a it's a timeline. You do timeline skipping. Uh, there's a time when you want that job and you say no. Uh, part of it, you don't you don't want any jobs. I can see too. Uh, that's part of it. Uh, because you are your connection to spirit seems to be getting stronger, but we believe you're you won't manifest a job that's necessary. I believe you'll find funds in some ways uh, to connect to you to what is necessary. So just continue to do as you feel. Thank you. Thanks. Hey, thank you. Blessings. Up next, we have Omran. Hello. <clears throat> um, well, my question is about um, um, if you know the Prophet Ali from Islam, I wanted to ask if he is the if he was the re reincarnation of um, the Sumerian god Enki, because I feel similarities there, and but I'm not sure if it's if he was his reincarnation or if he has some connections with him. Well, Enki brought uh, guidance, so it's like a, a man spirit guide. A, even connected to uh, the higher self. So it was just to, and you're gonna find that normal. Yeah, the Anunnaki energy is continued on with uh, those uh, as they discover themselves. They never really went away. And they're still here, of course. They're just more quiet. It's recent until recently. So yes, it's it was. Enki was there with that individual throughout their incarnation to make their, sure that they are successful. All right. Um, my second question is, since I have begun meditation, um, it's another tradition of meditations, and I'm dreaming constantly. Like, there is not a night where I don't dream, and my dreams feels like I'm an astral, and I'm always meeting these mm. um, supernatural spirits and and beings. And um, last a few a few nights ago, I I dreamt about a, a a demon or a jinn, a blue jinn, who was mm. in my room and attacking me. And then he wanted to um, yeah pierce me with with a knife, a poisonous knife, and I broke his knife. And then I did something and he disappeared, but he was he, he was outside my my home and I have I had seen him two times in my dreams, two dreams in 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 in, in into separate nights where he was uh, after me, and then this night he was in my room and he had the same colors, the same anger and he was furious at me. Um, I wanted to know if this was in astral or if this was, I don't know, what this was about because um, it seemed like it continued. Right, uh, breaking contracts, creating them. You also go into 
the astral of Islam. You've been doing that a lot recently. There's much healing that's necessary for yourself and them. So that jinn was learning from you, basically kind of like a, yes, a kid, uh, learning from me, playing a game. <laughs> uh, learning from you. Testing you, but no, as most children do. It's not ready for incarnation here, but it's willing enough to connect with you. And I believe that jinn is around you in your daily life, too. It's not making itself too. No. It follows you around all the time. Right? Okay. Well, uh, well yeah. Yeah, he had he had his ways on like appearing in front of me. He didn't come into my home. Mm -hmm. But he called my phone in my dream and whenever I answered it, he appeared. If I didn't yeah. answer, he could not come into my home. And that was very interesting because he was waiting outside my room, my mm -hmm. home. Yeah, he's kind of like obsessed with you. A uh, warning from you. Oh, like a yeah. like a child. Yeah. You're like a parent to him. Yeah, I felt like he was going to avenge himself for something I had done to him. Well, no, um, like most kids, yeah, there's some of that, yes, <laughs> but nothing to worry about. <laughs> no, well, well, because you're not, your energy's not always with him. You kind of say no, and it's like, whoa, you said no, what's up with that? <laughs> yeah. They're almost offended by it. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, yeah, he was. Yeah, yeah, I think there's a playful energy. Um, well, he was angry and I don't mm. know. He was he was quite creative with his. Just like voice. a kid, but yeah, it's like a child. It will calm down. <laughs> yeah, right, right. Yes. Well, thank you very much for answering my questions yes. and have a good time. Yes, blessings. Okay, blessings. Thank you. Up next, we have Silver Claw. Uh, greetings, hello. Yes, greetings to you. Um, if I may ask, uh, who, who is this channeling? <coughs> this is Elohim. Elohim, thank you. <coughs> My first question. Um, uh, so there's this thing um, called the Gateway Experience, and it's just like a um, like a sound technology. And um, I, they have in total right now like five focus levels. And the fifth one is like very, very new. And um, the first three focus levels, I've absolutely felt like I like I received the, the, the focus levels. The fourth one, maybe not so much. And so I wanted to know if this fifth one, if I would, if it's actually like a repackaging or if it's, or if I would actually like feel it like the first three um, focus levels. It's possible, but it's, it's not necessary to you go to the fifth one we you receive what you need to it will be a repackaging it won't be we don't feel it'd be as effective as the others mm -hmm. yeah i sensed like it was just more of like a new guided meditation more than anything mm -hmm. yeah it's more of a diluted version too it's not as strong as the other ones oh interesting <laughs> i wonder why anyway yeah so my second question um is are there any messages for me? Well, yes, you're going through timelines of as you probably feel of when things are going to turn around, <laughs> and that's why sometimes you might feel exhausted. You're not always getting the answer that you're looking for when you're awakened. You might feel tired out still, so you are somewhat waiting for a timeline to occur so you can feel a bit better about your situation. So. Other than, but not much we can say on that. Just continue to do what you're doing. Things will turn around, but yeah, as you can see, the Earth is kind of gone quiet in some ways. So mm -hmm. it will occur what you wish. It'll just take longer than you think. But it will occur. Ah, so you're saying I'm in alignment. It's very helpful to hear you say that, you know, keep doing what I'm doing. <laughs> yeah, yes. So I really, really appreciate that. Thank you. Yes, blessings. You too. Okay, thank you. Up next, I have Dragon's questions he asked me to read. His first question, he says, will COVID cause a change in work culture, especially in countries like USA and Japan, more flexible to individuals' needs? Yeah, we do see many more working at home. They see more of the benefits. Um, 
as for the office life that will eventually to die down, it's it's about changing the infrastructure of how you live. So yes, this virus is going to stay around as long as it needs to to do its operation. It's kind of like a parasite in some ways. It's there to take down infrastructures, but also to create them too. So it's up to humanity to rebuild. Okay, thank you. Second question. I think energy research is going to be super important this century, probably starting with physical and then scientifically discovering and exploring dimensional energy. What's the probability that we'll make fusion economically feasible this century, and are there more exciting things coming as well? Yes, but they're not ready. Well, they're doing it now. They're just not making it public. So throughout your future years, yes, most likely 10 years, uh, people are scared of it at this point. So it will find its way into your reality. So, blessings. Hey, blessings. Thank you. Up next, we have Stephen. Hello, Elohim. Yes, greetings. Greetings. How are you doing? Doing well. Sweet. Thank you. Much love. Thank you for coming. Um, I was wondering if you could definitely connect with the uh, dream astral travels that I had on Saturday. It was awesome. Um, uh, what it started with is that uh, I think I was like in my uh, Jurassic Park dinosaur realm again. And uh, and we had a whole bunch of group of us. And uh, we were kind of like on a saf safari type adventure, like going around like Jurassic Park, just going around and looking for different creatures and stuff. And I just remember we were with a group and we were talking with them for a little bit. And then we started going out uh, exploring. And uh, and I remember off in the distance, I kept hearing my name. It was weird, like real hyper, like Steven, Steven, come here, Steven. I was like, what is this? And I was like, so I, so I followed the sound and uh, eventually get to uh, what's a big old bird. I think it was a pterodactyl. And uh, it was calling my name. And I was like, hey, he's like, Six, Steven, come here. And I was like, so I finally went over to the bird. And uh, he's like, uh, oh, so you're the one that uh, drinks some Red Bulls and stuff. I was like, yeah. I was like, yeah, don't, don't do that. Don't do that. I think that's what he said. But then uh, uh, we started, then a lot of people, all, other people started gathering around. And, uh, and so he goes, uh, he goes, knock, knock. He's like, and then before anybody said anything, he's like, yeah, uh, this is a 250,000 year old bird or something. He said something after 250,000 years old. And then I was like, oh, cool, cool, awesome. And then so I asked him, uh, so I did the same to him. I was going, I went, knock, knock. And he goes, uh, he, he waits, he goes, what? I was like, I was like, oh, you're supposed to say, uh, who's there? And then so he waits for a second. He goes, who's there? And I said, it's Pleiadian. And then all of a sudden I heard it echo. A couple other people said Pleiadian as well. And then uh, so he started coming toward us. And uh, he, there's some type of divide between us. Guys, I couldn't like uh, get right up against him or cut to hug him or whatever. But uh, but he came up to him. There's like a little shelf in between us. And I put his, he, he had a giant black beak. And I remember putting my hand on his beak. And I just, just expressed my love and everything. And then uh, some other people also, you know, touched him and stuff. And then I put my hand on it on his hand. And uh, and then uh, and then after that, I just wonder if you have more information on that. Thank you. Well, yes, they brought that dream to you to uplift your vibrations. Yes, that the dinosaur realities, yes, are parallel realities to yours. So they are very much alive. They do come in and go, as do pterodactyls do end up flying. They, you know, they enjoy to connect with humans. So they're always finding a way into your reality. And that will continue to do so. <laughs> so you're, why you connect, it was like a coded dream, basically. There's Palladians bringing uh, codes about what where things are going through that dinosaur reality. So other beings will not notice it so much. They won't be able to decode what they brought to you. Of course, they're not going to tell me what it was here. But it has to do with the Earth's process where things are going. So you have to go by your feeling of where things just the timeline that you're feeling, where you're heading, just continue with that. You know, continue that feeling of awakening, disclosure, things like that. So it's basically a coded dream. So, so lessons. Yeah, that was awesome. Thank you for that. And the second is just I'll leave it open, just uh, connect with any energies in the universe, whatever is the strongest that wishes to bring through a message. I appreciate you. Well, yes, that 
Jurassic Park reality is so close to this one. It's, it's just like the dinosaur, their dragon realities. They can easily come into your world. And they do through vibration, through earth changes. So some of you are very connected to the dinosaur species. So you're, as you see them, it brings a new energy to you. So it's because it's part of you. Mm-hmm. When you see them and just like, yes, you might see a T-Rex all, you know, all scary, but it's like, wow, that's maybe so happy for you to be there. <laughs> so it shows how connected you are to the Earth's history, uh, to this planet and other realities, of course. So you're bringing that reality here. This is why so many people find it frustrating, but also you're bringing those realities into your reality. It comes in through a movie, but eventually it'll find its way into reality in some shape or form. So, blessings. Awesome, awesome. Thank you. Blessings. Thank you. Up next, we got this. Hello. Yes, greetings. Greetings. Do you yes. have any messages for me? Yes, you are here to two things, to bring in the army, to fight the army, but also to heal the army. Maybe that's three things. But uh, but not on your average army, but to uh, change things around. As many of you are here in different phases, but you're getting more of an insight to what you're here to do. Uh, to know more about yourself also through all this. Uh, to know that leadership ability, but not in the way of a, as a human would look at, more of a galactic human would look at. So you're going about it at that, you know, you're, you're like you're commanding your, your um, commanding uh, commands. <laughs> Are more athlete, uh, athlete. <laughs> yeah, they're more gentle. They're not like a commander, commander that would normally do, like you see on yo know, your armies. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> yes, go please. Yeah, okay. yeah they're just acknowledging. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Interesting. So. So the challenges um, I have here with people, you know, like very difficult people around me most of the time, <laughs> mm-hmm. are um, like a training. I would say. Yes. Well, yes, but it's also for you that you can handle it. That's why they're brought there. But also, you're there to give them some insight through your own energy. If they reject it, then that's that's on them. Basically, they can calm down a lot of their their frustration, but they choose not to. As part of the soul, is just not ready to let go of their own stubbornness, you can say. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it is a form of training, though, yes. Okay. Yeah, I feel difficult to explaining certain things to people, to, you know, regular people, because I always go too far too deep <laughs> into explaining and they really don't understand so yes I'm more and more becoming silent <laughs> yes you're bringing well you're bringing a new energy in, and many are not ready for that energy oh, it's a philosophy it's just a new vibration altogether so mm-hmm. individuals that are frustrated they're there to get healed they're just not ready to get healed instantly I mean, they're there to feel the, it's like to watch the ocean, but they're not really to feel the vibrations of the ocean. <laughs> mm-hmm. So. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you so much. Yes, blessings. Hey, blessings. Thank you. Up next, uh, I have Bregan's questions. He asked me to read those. His first question, he says, are there any messages for me at this time? Just realize your environment. Yes, you are shifting uh, timelines, as you know. Uh, things are going slow for a reason, but you will you will have a, a tr- you're at the end of your month, so probably mid month next month you'll find 
a drastic change in the way you look at things. So just continue on. Just continue to be observant. Lessons. Lessons. The second question is uh, for Roshin. Roshin was wanting to ask for guidance on a possible career path. She's hoping to leave her employer towards the end of the year. Uh, yes, I believe it would be successful, but it still won't be easy. It won't be an easy transition, but yes. It's just um, as long as she has a plan, it will be okay. But still, it won't be easy no matter what, it seems. But she'll make it through. You know, just follow her heart. Lessons. Okay, lessons. Um, next, we have James. Hello. Um, you mean, yeah. uh, I got messages for my uh, guides or anyone like that? Let's say you are discovering new territory, new direction. Uh, there's a new creative direction. Uh, basically, just know, to know more about yourself. Uh, you're very connected to the Dolphin Collective. There's, yeah, seahorse energies you're connected to. Of course, anything ocean life, but the seahorse vibration is something that you're... They can open up different realities. They can calm, bring in new energies because they're very unusual looking. So my looks at they're kind of amazement. So it just shows you how alien you are, too. I believe you've been uh, of that form at one time. <laughs> Lessons. As you can... Uh... So my uh, current location kind of related to my past uh, in Greece, in Greek times. Yeah, you're healing that at this time, yes. But also you're giving back to those that cause you difficulties. Giving back in the way of forgiveness and healing the land. Uh, but, yeah, but you're mostly working on yourself at this time. I mean, that area needs as much love as you can go. You know, it's just to put, it's where you need to be at this moment, yes. There'll be a time when you might move possibly in your future, but right now, it's like you need to be there. Lessons. Hey, blessings. Thank you. Up next, I have Christy's questions. She asked me to read those as well. The first question, I'm having a hybrid child with my, am I, am I having a hybrid child with my friend Michael? Yeah, so I see uh, two children. At least one, another one is a possibility, yes. Definitely one, but I feel like another one is right around the corner. Blessings. Great, right. blessings. The second question, any messages for me and Hayden from Kronos Kitty who passed? Oh, Kronos, yeah, yeah, well, it was time for Kronos to go. But, you know, there's always a room for a new kitty, if you wish. Uh, it's... To renew the energies. Kronos is there with you in spirit, which was, you know, he's basically a spirit guide to most of you at this time, a protector. Uh, he brings uh, energies to you, uh, sometimes star, star energies, uh, just whatever you feel like, what you need for that moment. It's obviously on a vibration level. But he's definitely connected to both of you and to your higher selves. Essence. Hey, blessings. Thank you. Up next, we have Kevin. Greetings, uh, Elohim. Yes, greetings. Greetings. Uh, do you have any uh, messages for me? And like my uh, this current location I'm at is kind of random. And what can you say about it? Well, you're healing timelines at this time. So you're at a right. current location because you need to be there for at least that moment. Just for now, or yeah. observation that you know that you're aware of. So that's part of your soul journey. Uh, to know more about yourself too. I mean, that place needs to be healed, but also you need something from it too, like a As downward. Like, yes. Yeah, like not where I live, but like where I'm at, like right now. Yes. Or right now is where you, yes, it's it's for you to receive a download. Mm -hmm. huh. So yes, that's interesting. Uh, or many downloads. Okay. 
that's kind of cryptic, but all right. <laughs> well, you wanted to um, free yourself from the old energies, so. Mm-hmm. Oh, so. okay. Well, all right. Uh, what else? Um, do you have anything to say about uh, my work courses next year? I had to cancel the one this year, but will it all line up next year for uh, work training? I think it will. Uh, yes, you're just aligning your vibration at this time. So, well, you connected more to yes, as you know, the, to the higher realms recently. Yeah, even even right now, my like vibration is is like yeah. Really high. You're, well, yeah, because you're going to the twelfth dimension at this moment, it seems, or even higher than that. <laughs> Uh, it seems to be a place that you need to be at at this moment. So yeah, your yeah, studies will really... find its way. I feel yes, the more of the third dimension is going to seem what less and less significant to you over time. As you yeah, it's this. almost like a dreamlike state. It's hard to handle sometimes, and it's I just get it through meditation. Like I don't do anything. It's just mm-hmm. it's weird. Well, yeah, because you're an open channel now. Yeah. So you're just a, an open vessel. The Earth needs that. Yeah. So you're bringing like, new right energies to Earth. Yeah, it's like right now, it's even like I'm in like the fifth dimension or something. It's weird. Yeah. Well, you're connected more to your angelic self. Yeah. So, as you, yeah, it's kind of like you turn into drugs in some ways. <laughs> yeah, it's like well, the earth is getting high off you right now. <laughs> well, that's interesting. Something All right. Um, um, what can you say about, I had another question, but I can't remember right now. Do you have anything else to to say about my like uh, messages or anything? No, just continue on your just do what you need to do right now. It, being sporadic like this is good for you to heal on many levels. Yeah, you're becoming less uh, human as you can see. <laughs> well, hopefully not a uh, not too fast. <laughs> no, but well, you're kind of slowing it down right now. It seems <laughs> interesting. All right. Uh... Yeah, thank you. Okay, blessings. Up next, we have Marvin. Well, looks like Marvin left. Um, hopefully he comes back because we're nearing the end of the list tonight. Um, up, so I'll read Daria's questions next. Um, her first question, any messages from me to you, or from you to me, astrally or earthy? Well, yeah, you're going to a timeline creation. You have a lot of timelines that you're bringing to the Earth. Some of them get rejected, but not all of them. That has a lot to do with the future. So you came here to build the future. Uh, there's more to it than that, but the future seems to be where you feel the most comfortable. The modern world is you're kind of making it work for you, but the future seems to be where uh, you feel more at home. And what they say, what future? Well, 10 years in the future and further than that. That's it. Okay, that's the second question. Any other messages? Thank you. Yes, you're doing a... a Many downloads for the Earth, actually. As you go into astral, you're bringing many downloads to many individuals uh, for them to for them to even find their, their own selves, even a career. You also give career advice in your astral. Uh, sometimes you walk around with glasses, it seems, like reading glasses. <laughs> uh, and you, you, yeah, so you do connect to third-dimensional uh, people in a way to help, like you do a, a, like a counselor. <laughs> Help them with their ways. I think you already know that. You do that already. So that's much of what you're doing in astral currently. If they're not going to open up to the star people, at least you can help them in the way that they are currently. Blessings. Okay, blessings. Thank you. I think Marvin came back, so we'll go right to Marvin. Uh, blessings. Who am I speaking with? Sal Oh, man. Uh, blessings, brother. And stuff. Um, for my first question, uh, I was somewhere last week on sa- uh, Saturday, and um, I had somebody recognize me, but I don't think it was that person. I just wanted to see if you could pick it up. I was at the Plasma Center, 
And one of my friends that I normally uh, speak with, he's a Muslim, and he peeped the way that this guy was looking at me and stuff. And I was just looking at my friend's expression of how the guy was looking at me, but I felt it, and I'm just trying to figure out what was it and who was it and why was it in that human form? Why was it in a human form? Yeah, why was it why was it in a human form and I recognized it, me and my friend? Well, yes, that's the uh, it has to be in a human form. <laughs> I mean it has no other choice to be in a human form at this point. If it wants to connect to your uh, to your world, it has no choice. <laughs> So, but I, I picked it up because they, they call security on the guy, but I just looked up at him and I'm just trying to figure out what connection did I have and what what did I pick up on it, even though it was, uh, you know, it was some, something like me, but I felt it was something else. Well, it was a reptilian energy. It was kind of like well, a, a soul that was kind of hijacked, it seems. <laughs> That's yeah. That, that's what I kind of feel, and it and it and it noticed me and stuff. Like I knew exactly what it was instantly at that time, and it was just causing chaos because it during that time. I guess it wasn't supposed to be the you know wrong time, wrong place, and you know is your body suit is is you know what I'm saying pretty much obvious to people that pay attention to that, and I picked it up instantly. Yes, yeah. So expect expect more of that as you go into your galactic transformation. Will it be in friendly encounters or will it be standoffs more like how I noticed it? Uh, it be a little bit of everything. <laughs> if you're lucky, anything's I... happening right now. <laughs> Take what you can get. Um, <laughs> is, there way, is there a way I could protect myself from that type of stuff? You already are, but part of you needs to experience what you're experiencing. Part of you needs to kind of push yourself to the edge to, I mean, you want contact. Sometimes it's not always a contact that you're looking for, but it's something that your soul can handle. So you, yeah, don't worry about it. Well, don't kill you, make it stronger, I guess. Correct. Okay. I take the lesson. I take this experience as a learning lesson. Yes. Okay. For my second question, um, what can you give me uh, when I was talking to Enlil and I asked him to show up in my dreams and stuff? Is it some way that you give me an insight of if he did show up or what we talked about and was there some type of teachings and stuff? Well, it was all, I feel it was, it was the connection was made, but it was all made in higher astral. It wasn't meant, yeah, for, this, it wasn't meant for this world. Okay, but did, so, did that, did he, did he answer my call, though? Yeah, it was all just cryptic if it's brought into this reality. So, okay. it's, he told you things you can't mention here. <laughs> I got yeah. you, but I just... Well, what I, where I reenacted I, like sometime during life and wonder about certain things that I do and stuff like that, with that... You that know, happens. like... But, it happens all the time, you're just not aware of it. <laughs> sometimes I kind of... Sometimes I kind of feel of it, and I made a connection about the West Virginia rebe uh, rebellious slaves, and there was another one like my ancestor and stuff. So I'm just I'm gonna hold my tongue on that one and stuff. But uh, I see it was just more than that during that time period that they went and visited to spark up a little fight and yeah. doing the black slavery, and uh, I give them thanks for that. If if you could if you could give him you know like a handshake of a little hug and stuff like that you know during this time now and stuff the experience that we're going through mm, it's not it's not, it's not an easy road and stuff but if you could give us some guidance and strength and you know build us up that we could much appreciate you're, that you're getting guidance all the time you're just not always realizing it okay <laughs> so I'm gonna have to go to our next question thank you. Okay, thank you. Um, up next, we have Rainbow. Hello, Elohim and family. Yes, please. Um, I would like to know, is there any messages from my aquatic Atlantic family at this time? 
where you're healing blockages with the earth. Uh, right now, it's no more about yourself, your star self. To allow more downloads, your past life energies so you can heal, you want to reconnect back to your power. So it's grad. The memories are slowly coming back. Um, it's coming through your energy field. There might be parts where you feel like you can fly again and and transport your energy from one place to another through tel teleportation. So just uh, keep the door open of what you like to connect with. That was wonderful. Okay. Um, any other messages from any galactic family that they would like for me to take heed and to learn and to put more effort into at this time? Well, the Ar Arcturians are very strong with you. You were an early Arcturian on the Earth. I'm not sure if you're aware of that. You're no, of, I did not. Yeah, you're a part of this, the early, yes, uh, seeding of the Earth through Arcturian energies, basically to welcome other alien energies to connect to the Earth. This is why you have the memories that you do right now. Yes. Connecting to a more higher dimensional energy. I mean, you can close that off, but your path, you didn't want that closed off. No, I do not want that closed off. Well, this is why we're bringing in the Arcturian energy through. As you more under feel that energy flow through, you'll even see the formation of the Earth becoming, you know, you're here for all of it, basically. So. That was wonderful. That was wonderful. Okay, thank you. <laughs> Okay, thank you. Blessings. A blessed this evening is me. Thank you again for coming in. Yes, greetings. Yeah. Yes. Um, I had a question about uh, an activation that I had that it seems that it's getting stronger, more potent with, you know, the vibrational training that I, you know, do on the side. But I feel like an imbalance developing where my ego wants to, you know, take more control and then a chance for abuse. Uh, of my vibration, and I'm looking to see what's the whole point of this activation and this vibration. I, I don't see an, a practical application for it with the world as it is right now. It, it was a an optional download that you wanted to try out, you can say. Uh, mm -hmm. you, can, you can say it's almost like you're sending it back to the aliens. Yeah, fix it. <laughs> uh, so they didn't open it up as much as they could have. So they gave you kind of like a like a, a beta version. <laughs> so they didn't open up to its full capabilities. The Earth is, of course, not ready for it, but it's for you to basically scan the Earth's energies more clearly. Hmm. And part of you wasn't... Now you can look at it from that point of view, so you can't activate it through your own vibration. It just for you to feel the Earth's energies... Um, yeah, and part of your ego is kind of blocking. It's like, I don't know if I want to receive that or not, but... Now you know, I believe you'll explore it more. Yeah, because it's more of me um, sending the the energy and, and not so much receiving. So you're saying the receiving part of it is going to develop more going forward. Yeah, it's scanning. It's scanning the Earth, yeah. But the right, Earth, cool. uh, like you have a hurricane coming, uh, things like that. Uh, you might feel where it's coming from. The energies are, you know, even California fires. Those type of things. You might not get a full picture of it, but you'll get more than you did before. All right. Sounds good. All right. Thank you for that. Um, my second question, uh, just leave it open. Uh, any messages that are most important at this time? Well, yes. Also, your, your energy of understanding weather, because weather is why society is the way it is, too. Hmm. You know, the heat, it brings out emotion. It has a it's kind of its own mind control over society. You know, if the vibra if the weather was, you know, pretty decent year round, people would be able to think more clearly. But the weather is where all some of these alien beings are, or even angelics, for better or for worse, creating a timeline through it. <laughs> yeah. So understand the weathering patterns, like where like you where you live, where you know, it's cold, but what's the reason? What's the real reason behind it? It's not just because it's cold. <laughs> Speaking of the weather, the last few days have been extremely hot, and the sky yeah. has been off-colored. Um, exactly. And like someone put a dome over the top of it, and it's just kind of keeping it trapped inside. Yes. 
Uh, Correct. Yes. Yeah, I notice things like that, especially since you know I, I look at the sky a lot uh, with the sun. But um, yeah, that, it, that's just kind of like an anomaly right there that I, I'd like to get a little more insight on. If you could possibly say what they're doing to the sky. Well, yeah, it's the keep. Some of it has a positive reason for timelines to do as they need to do for soul growth. Many don't like the word soul growth, but because it's it's not as enjoyable as they like it to be. It's not exactly like a prison, but in some ways it is. It's just to keep souls to align what they're here to do. Now, it's up to them. They can make it work, and they can ruin it. You still have power there. So it's just it's more like a, a timeline developer. Yeah, because normally... And he's also there to push people to do certain things. Because it felt like normally I could punch a hole through some of these clouds and chemtrails that they put into this into the sky, but this dome it felt like a an all encompassing dome and I couldn't crack it for some reason. So I guess it's for a benefit, you know. For it's, it's... yeah, sometimes benefits are the harshest of growth for some. It's like mm. as you know, some you know, it's like wonder why a spear guy can just sit there and watch you suffer all day. <laughs> It's kind of like that. <laughs> but there is a positive around it also. There's some souls are just so head, so hard to get them to understand anything. Mm. They need, you know, they need type, these type of situations, unfortunately. All right. Fair enough. All right. Well, thank and you very much. Uh, your area is also being protected, too. There are beings that want to make things a lot far more worse. Oh, yeah. Definitely. So it's like you put a dome over it to kind of keep. It's like you already have no problems. As it is you don't need any more. <laughs> I see. All right. That's part of it too. So. All right. Well, thank you very much for that. Blessings yes. to you. And uh, thank you for yes. your assistance. Well, also realize life is a cartoon. It is getting to be more unusual, <laughs> and it's already been unusual before on a third dimensional level. But now it's going to get more. Unusual, so let's see. Well. Everybody, uh, take off. Great. Blessings. <laughs>